Embarking on a Journey Through the Skies, Jet Pilot, a movie from 1957, offers a mix of funny, surprising, and sad moments that keep viewers hooked. With classic Hollywood stars, the film dives into espionage and thrilling adventures. Is there a scene or moment from this movie that sticks with you? Or do you have a favorite actor whose performance you love the most? Share your stories and memories below. Get ready for an exciting ride with Jet Pilot. In the late 1950s, a captivating film took audiences on a thrilling journey through the skies and the tense backdrop of the Cold War. This cinematic adventure fascinated viewers with its high-flying action and compelling performances by the lead actors. Following its release, the movie sparked a wave of interest that went beyond the silver screen. It inspired a variety of spin-offs across different forms of media, exploring themes of espionage and high-stakes aviation. Fans were drawn to the excitement and drama that the story presented. Moreover, the movie's popularity led to a surge in related merchandise, from model airplanes to clothing featuring symbols from the film. This commercial success highlighted the widespread appeal of the narrative and its characters. The movie's influence endured over time, as evidenced by continued interest and homage paid to its themes and characters. Its portrayal of aviation, espionage, and romance continues to resonate with audiences, shaping perceptions within popular culture. In conclusion, this cinematic adventure not only captured the imagination of its original audience, but also left a lasting impression on popular culture. The subsequent adaptations and merchandise serve as a reminder of the enduring legacy of this iconic film. At the film's outset, a black painted Lockheed T-33 shooting star, masquerading as a Yak-12, takes the stage. As the narrative unfolds, two Northrop F-89 Scorpions make their presence known one during the finale, taxiing on the parking ramp, and another, unpainted, designated for Olga's test flight. In a subsequent flight, a critical moment arises when the protagonist faces engine trouble. The aircraft loses a turbine disc mid-climb, compelling a dead stick landing a precarious maneuver that underscores the challenges encountered during routine operations. Directed by Joseph von Sternberg, Jet Pilot claims the distinction of being his solitary venture into the realm of color cinema. Notably, this film also marks the culmination of von Sternberg's directorial career, making it his final contribution to the cinematic landscape. In summary, Jet Pilot weaves a tale of covert aviation operations, showcasing notable aircraft, harrowing flight incidents, and a director's departure from the cinematic stage. In the 1950s, there was a movie made during a tense time called The Cold War. It was supposed to come out earlier, but got delayed because the person in charge, Howard Hughes, kept changing it. When it finally came out in 1957, things had changed. Hughes had sold the company that was making the movie, and it was being released by a different one. The movie was about an American pilot who falls in love with a Russian spy who wants to leave her country. This was a time when people were really scared of spies, and there were a lot of trials happening because of it. But by the time the movie came out, people weren't as interested in all that anymore. Even though the movie had a famous actor, John Wayne, it didn't do well. One big reason was that it took so long to make that by the time it came out, the cool stuff it was about, like jet planes, wasn't new anymore. So, people didn't find it exciting. In the end, the movie showed how hard it can be to make a movie and how unpredictable people's interests can be. Even though it had famous people and a big production, it just didn't click with audiences at the time. In their final movie roles, Lois Austin and Rufalma Stevens starred in a film that played a crucial part in aviation history. The movie showcased the last two flights of the first Bell X-1, famously named Glamorous Glennies. The aircraft got a makeover for its role as a Soviet parasite fighter in the film, with white paint applied to various parts like the vertical stabilizer, fairings, and wings. It was launched from a Boeing EB-50A Superfortress with the serial number 46L7. The X-1 kept its movie appearance until 1976 when it was restored for display at the National Air and Space Museum's Milestones of Flight Gallery. This film marked the conclusion of an era for both actresses and had a lasting impact on aviation history. Amidst tight security and numerous personnel changes, the production of this film endured for over 18 months. In one scene, after intercepting a B-36 in an F-94 Starfire, the characters are seen departing in a F-80 shooting star. The lead actors expressed concerns over the screenplay, considering it silly. John Wayne, in particular, took on his role with the intention of making a political statement, but later realized it would become one of the worst films he would ever make. In some scenes set in the Soviet Union, a gloss black prototype Northrop XP-89 Scorpion makes an appearance. 
Barbara Freaking's final film performance is in this movie. The movie also showcases a night intercept of a B-36 B by a Lockheed F-94 Starfire. Even though the scene is dimly lit, the rarely seen retractable 20mm cannon turrets of the B-36B are visible in the extended position. In the making of Jet Pilot, Howard Hughes initially brought on director Peter Godfrey, later replacing him with Joseph von Sternberg, who led the project until February 1950. The film's notable mothership, housing the Soviet parasite fighter, is in fact a Boeing B-50, an evolution of the B-29. Notably, the U.S. Air Force collaborated closely with the production, necessitating stringent security measures. This cooperation underscores the film's commitment to authenticity in its portrayal of aerial combat dynamics. In the 1957 movie Jet Pilot, Soviet yaks were portrayed by Lockheed T-33S. These planes had dark paint on their lower fuselage, which obscured the jet intakes. Additionally, the tip of the vertical stabilizer was painted light gray to alter its outline. Howard Hughes initially considered Cary Grant for the lead role, but Grant declined due to scheduling conflicts. The Soviet parasite fighter that Shannon flies is actually a Bell X-1, the world's first supersonic aircraft design. In the late 1950s, a movie came out after facing some money issues. It was supposed to be released earlier, but got delayed. Some parts of the movie looked old-fashioned because they used footage from the late 1940s and early 1950s. One of the actors, Richard Robber, who played FBI agent George Rivers, died in a car crash a few years before the movie came out. Even though he wasn't there, his acting still shined in the film. So, despite money problems and some old scenes, Jet Pilot eventually reached audiences, showing different time periods and the actor's strong presence even after sad events. In the world of movies, there's a story about a film that had a bumpy ride before reaching the big screen. It all started when a wealthy guy named Howard Hughes wanted to show off cool airplanes in a movie. The filming began way back in 1949, but things didn't go smoothly. There were lots of delays, and the movie didn't come out until 1957. A famous actor named John Wayne got upset about how much money was spent, calling it ridiculous. The story for the movie came from a guy named Paul Short who bought it from someone else. But then Hughes stepped in and changed everything, including the cast. Despite all the troubles, the movie Jet Pilot got made, showing how complicated making movies can be, especially with someone like Hughes in charge. In Jet Pilot, a 1957 film, an F-86 Saber is utilized to represent a Russian chase aircraft. It's painted in dark colors with high visibility orange and gray, which obscure its actual silhouette. The film stars John Wayne and Janet Leigh, who interestingly share the same real surname Morrison. Location filming for the Soviet airbase scenes took place at George Air Force Base, a World War II airbase with many of its wartime structures still intact, giving it a primitive appearance. The 94th FS and its parent first fighter group were actually based at George during filming, having just completed a deployment to Ladd Air Force Base, Alaska, as depicted in the storyline. In the early sequences, actual F-86A Sabre jets from the 94th Fighter Squadron, the first unit equipped with them in the U.S. Air Force in 1949, were depicted. Howard Hughes wanted George Marshall as a director. The U.S. Air Force capitalized on Chuck Yeager's 1947 supersonic flight by offering his services as a stunt pilot. During one stunt, he misjudged an inverted dive, causing the plane's tail to come apart while he was too low to eject, but he managed to pull out just in time. In the making of this movie, there were a lot of delays before it finally came out. Howard Hughes, who made a similar movie before called Hell's Angels, was really into showing aviation scenes in this one too. He spent a long time editing the movie, trying to get the flying parts just right. It seems like he really loved airplanes and wanted to share that excitement. It's interesting that even though the movie is supposed to be set in the Soviet Union, they filmed those scenes at a place in America that looked old-fashioned. Hughes was really careful about all the little details to make it seem real. The story of the movie is not just about airplanes, it's also about love and spying during the Cold War. The actors playing the main characters, Janet Lee and John Wayne, had great chemistry together on screen. Their love story in the movie shows how people can still care for each other even when things are tough. All these parts of the movie come together to make it really special, with amazing visuals and emotions that stick with you. Jet Pilot is a movie that shows Hugh's passion for what he did, and it's still loved by people even after many years.